Hi, in this tutorial we're going to see how to change and apply different pressure to strokes to achieve line variation. Ok, so as you can see in here I have this rough drawing of a polar bear I'm working on. And what we're going to be seeing is the, basically it's one of the options in the stroke panel. The stroke panel, as you can see, it's a standalone panel that you can find under View Studio Stroke or you can also find it, say you are tracing the line, you're gonna find the same panel within the strokes option for the pen tool, for the pencil tool, etc. Okay. So as you can see in here, I drew this polar bear tracing over a reference I have in here. And I just did it the same way we saw last week with this method that is quite easy. Remember, go like this and then you go just soften all the curves. Then you take the corner tool and you just uh, soften all the angles okay so it's easy to see that i work like this because as you can see in here it's all squares that means that i've been working with uh, the cos mode which would be this one the sharp mode and then i got just softening Opa. <laughs> i go softening like so okay if you didn't see the tutorial just check it out now because it's a really interesting um technique but to the point, what we have in here is this uh, illustration where, you know, the line is quite boring. Um, it's just, you know, all the same width within the whole piece. Um, the legs are different, but this is just because I applied uh, 12 points in here, whereas in here I applied eight. So if I go like this, it would be exactly the same and even more boring. <laughs> so what I want to show you here is how to just apply some uh, rhythm to these uh, illustrations you do. And if you happen to know a little bit about Adobe Illustrator, this would be the equivalent to what they released. I think it was in version CS5. It was called something like Line Width. Um, so this would be more or less the same idea. Okay, so let's select uh, this line, for example. And let's go to the stroke panel. Down at the bottom, you're going to find this pressure. Um, click on the square and you're going to be presented with this uh, grid. In this grid, we can find these um, two, let's call them stops. Okay. If I drag down to the bottom, they come together. It's just like one. Okay. Together, the two of them. And if you look at the line we had selected here, this one, you can see that the width changes, okay? So now if I double click, I'm gonna be just dragging one of them. And if you look at the line itself, it's good that uh, the nodes are removed while I'm doing this, so you can see it. So you can see in there, the line it's going to be affected by what I do. Okay. See in there. Now we have more possibilities. We can also click in here, for example, and add a new stop and go varying the stroke to our needs. We can also move it up, down, I mean, left and right. It would be, we can add as many as we need. Okay. And well, as you can see now, this line is much more interesting than what we had before. If I, for example, select this and I copy, clicking command C, I copy the attributes and I click in here and now I click command shift V. This is going to apply exactly the same um, pattern I just created. And you can see in here, 
And from this one, for example, I could just start moving to start saying, okay, I don't want it like this because oba, I'm interested in this being thicker in this area, also here until it goes to the top area, which corresponds to this stop in here, something like this. I like to work with thick width at the very beginning so I can really see what's going on. I can see the, the variation much better. So I keep going, something like this. And now this corresponds to this area here. I'm going to add another one. OK. Oh, I have both selected. This is, opa. This is not what I wanted. I just want this one. So I add this in here and this in here. Quite nice. Still don't think it's exactly what I was looking for. Something like this. The more I add, the more variation I'm going to get. That's for sure. Uh, I think I need to remove something here that I don't like. Yeah, exactly. This one looks bad. And this is basically it. Um, now I still can go and apply some soft angles to these notes I initially drew. And for example, this one I'm going to also copy. Yeah, more or less it works. Mm -hmm. OK, another thing that it's interesting to note about this uh, pressure panel is that you can um, save each pattern you create, the variations you create. For example, I really like this, um, this one I created. So the only thing I have to do is click on Save Profile. So I click on it and I have it here. OK, so the next one, the next uh, stroke I, I trace, say like this, it's going to be affected by this I created before. In the same way, if I want to do exactly the same with the pencil tool or the brush tool, just draw my line, come here, I don't know, modify it, so I want something like this, and I just save profile and it works the same. If I want to apply some other style, I just have to select it, click on it, and we have it. Say I just want it to be normal, back to normal, to default. Click on Reset and back to normal. OK, there is one more detail interesting to know about. And it's the fact that, for example, you see the, the pencil tool and the brush tool. They have in the context me menu for these tools, they have this uh, thing called controller. This is set to none. In this case, it doesn't matter for the pencil tool. Because if I come here and I apply a new pattern that I previously recorded, it's it's working. But for the brush tool, just in, in case you're just using it, and you come here and this is set to none, okay? You come here, select it, come here. Now you want to apply one of your patterns and it's not working. And actually I don't know why, <laughs> maybe somebody can tell us. Thing is that you always have to be aware uh, about the controller, just set it to automatic. Now you trace it, okay? You select it, sorry, select it. Now you come here and now it works. In the same way, if I started with it in non and now it's changed to automatic, it doesn't really matter that I changed it because it was initially created in the known with the controller set to none and it, it won't work. OK, I don't really understand why this is like this, but that's the way it is. And it's good to know. So when using the brush, the vector brush tool, just um, be aware of your controller and set it to automatic. And so this pressure mode will work. OK, so basically that is it to help you out applying some rhythm to your drawings something like this it's just something like 
mm, this then you just go varying as you need and well basically that is it um i highly recommend you to give it a go and to start you know drawing with this um method and you will see results very quickly how your own creations are you know looking much better i think also that this method in combination with the method we saw last week are going to help you a lot making your graphics look much better so i highly recommend them give them a go try to combine the two of them starting with what we saw last week keep going with this and you're gonna have some illustrations with lots of rhythm and they're gonna look i'm sure they're gonna look much better than if you just start with your pen tool and and try to just to to make them look uh, you know good and all that okay so this was it for this week um it was a short tutorial and i hope you learned please subscribe like and comment as much as possible uh, because that's gonna help me a lot keep going with this project and well thanks again see you soon bye bye